P implies Q, the first premise. P implies R. And then the conclusion is uh, P implies Q and R. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay. So how do we prove this argument? Uh, once again, this is a conditional statement. The conclusion is a conditional statement. I want to prove it. So let's start noting it. Uh, this is how I should be writing it, okay? Because uh, P implies Q and R versus P implies Q and R. So these are different uh, uh, statements, and different arguments, or sentences, all right? And so their truth values can also be different. So be, be careful about where the parentheses are. So, um, okay, so I cleaned this part because I'm gonna start writing um, uh, my logical deduction. So this is premise one, this is premise two. Um, well, so how do I start? Well, first off, if you are trying to prove a conclusion, a conclu um, uh, conditional conclusion, I, I forgot the word, uh, well then you start with assuming uh, the first part, P. All right? Well, why is that? Well, again, remember the P implies Q statement's truth table. This argument is true whenever P and Q are true, true whenever they both are false, or you know, simply P is false, and it is false only if the first guy is true but the second guy is false. All right, so in this case, it's false. Hmm. So therefore, if P is false, uh, this argument is true anyway. Okay, so I don't care about whether P is being false. I, I care about what happens if P is true. So if P is true, in order for this argument, this, this sentence to be true, the conclusion must be true as well. So this case, not this case. So for this reason, I start assuming that uh, P is true. So wh whatever I write on this table means the argument a statement is true, all right? Okay, so this is uh, assumption for conditional derivation, all right, A, C, D. Well, what else? Well, given that I have P and P implies Q, Q, what does that mean? That means P is true, P implies Q is true, so therefore Q must be true. Well, this is also the rule called modus ponens. Modus ponens, I mean, you don't really have to memorize these rules. Um, as long as you understand the construction of truth table, uh, you can always sort of uh, recall these rules. But, well, if you like, this, the fastest way is to just memorize them. So modus ponens uh, of argument one and three. What else? Well, again, given that P is true and P implies R is true, all right, so this guy is true. Uh, this statement P implies R is true, so therefore uh, the, 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 this part R must be true as well. So this is again modus ponens, let me write MP of the arguments 2 and 3. Um, so what do I have? Well, remember I have, I want to show, I, I, I assumed this, I want to show Q and R. So here Q is true, R is true, and so therefore Q and R must be true as well. Okay, so therefore Q and R, uh, so I basically, uh, conjunction, all right, of the arguments in line four and five. So, and, I mean, I am, uh, I am connecting uh, Q and R atomic sentences with and, so it must be true as well. And that's it. Okay, so I close this box mainly because uh, I assumed P and showed that Q and R is true. So that means my argument P implies Q and R 
is a true argument. So once again, everything in, in this box actually may be wrong. All right, so everything in this box may be wrong. So this is an assumption, assumption. So these are premises. I know them by heart, they are true, okay? Uh, but the, this is an assumption. We just assume that it is true, but maybe it is false. But remember my initial argument, if this is false, this, this, this statement is true anyway, all right? And what I just show is that if this is true, however, this must be true as well. So therefore, this argument, this you know, sentence is a true argument. So we, we say, well, thanks to uh, uh, conditional derivation, CD, uh, between the arguments three to six, I have this statement and that's it. I have the premises, I have the conclusion. So this is a valid argument. And this is how we prove this valid argument. All right, any question about this question, guys? Okay. Sorry if you're hearing some weird voices. Um, what else? I can I can prove one more. Um, five two two. Okay, so let's prove this one. Okay, so what does this argument say? It says the following. Uh, P, impl oops. Yep. P implies Q and P implies R. Um, this way implies I'm assuming that this, I, I did not uh, prove this theorem. This is a theorem, by the way. Uh, implies P implies Q and R. I somewhat remember this. Maybe I proved this. Uh, well, okay, uh, we'll just repeat it. Okay, so that's the uh, theorem. Well, what is the difference between theorem and um, uh, argument? Well, each theorem is an argument. It's a specific uh, set of arguments. Uh, and the theorems are uh, arguments that have no premise. Okay, as simple as this. So, how do we prove an argument like this, given that we have no premise? Well, because this is a conditional argument, uh, we're gonna start assuming the first part, right? This is like P implies Q, so I assume P is true. So, assumption one, so again, this is an assumption, P implies Q and P implies R. Very good. So assumption for conditional derivation, ACD. Um, what else? Well, simplification, this is and statement. Something and something is true. So that means those both things are true. So P implies Q must be true. So this is simplification of the argument in line one. And similarly, P implies R must be true. This is again, simplification of the argument in line one. Okay, uh, what else? Mm, basically, that's it. Uh, I can't really deduce anything else from uh, this assumption and these two guys. So what am I gonna do next? Well, remember, uh, after I assume this, I try to prove this or show that this argument is true. Well, the yes, the argument, the entire argument I'm trying to prove is conditional, but the after the assumption, the sub argument is also conditional. So what I'm going to do, I am going to prove within a proof, within a proof. So what does that mean? That means I'm going to make another assumption P. So this is assumption for conditional derivation. So I'm going to assume P is true. All right. So remember, I want to show that P implies Q and R is a true argument because I assume this is true. Well, if P is false, this argument is true anyway. So therefore, I, want to sh I need to show that 
when this is true, I mean when P is true, this P implies Q and R is also true. Okay? So suppose that P is true. Very well. Uh, what do I deduce? Well, I can use everything beforehand. All right? Because I did not close any box yet. So, um, well, I can use, well, the first one, you can't use it because instead of using it, use the simpler versions of it, uh, which is the second and the third line. So P implies Q and P, uh, modus uh, opponents, right? So P is true, assuming that. P implies Q as an assumption of this is true. So this is true, this is true. Well, boy, Q must be true. All right, so this is modus ponens of the arguments between two and four. And similarly, by the way, P implies R and P, R must be true. This is modus ponens between the arguments two and uh, five. So what do I have? I have both Q and R true. So I just, you know, combine them. So that means Q and R is also true. The conjunction argument between the rule, between the uh, arguments five uh, and six. So that's it. If P is true, Q imply, uh, I'm sorry, Q and R is true. Now I close this box and safely say, look, this argument must be true, whether P is true or not. So what does that mean? That means if one, it, this is by the way, thanks to con conditional derivations between the arguments uh, four to seven. And what did I show? I just showed that if this part is true, the conclusion, which is this part, is also true. So you know what? I can close the entire box and call this nine. I just repeat my initial statement, I mean. P implies Q and P implies R implies P implies Q and R must be a true argument whether the argument in line one is true or not. So therefore, uh, this is true. So this is the basically, well, there's no premise, but this is the conclusion, this, the argument with no premise. And so this argument, this conclusion is a true argument, uh, true conclusion. So this is how we prove the theorem.